Okay, so what we did last time was we got, I believe that we got up to um, we got up to here, current to voltage amplifiers. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I think in the previous slide set, um, there was not anything beyond this other than the references. So current to voltage amplifiers are typically used with uh, DACs, uh, digital to analog converters. Um, and they basically convert a lot. Of, these are probably less used today than they've been in the past. Um, because op amps are uh, uh, converters now typically have, I believe this function already built into them. But the gain of this is very simple. The input current times the feedback resistor <coughs> is equal to the output voltage. By the way, this topology, because this is shown as current here, this also falls in another category called trans, trans impedance amplifiers, which is it converts current into voltage. And that output is based upon the, the feedback resistor value. <coughs> so this is this is also without the without the uh, photodiode or the sensor. This is the same kind of circuitry that you'd have for a, a trans impedance amplifier. Here's our circuit. <clears throat> um, now, in our case, let me let me pull that up. I think I've download just downloaded from this guy. I'll download. I'll download this one too. This one too on here. <coughs> By the way, I did add to the seven basic questions tab. And these are the questions. These are the examples on how to do it. You should be able to do this without too much trouble. But give it a give it a try and see if you can get that done as well. And everything is due by Sunday at midnight. So I think it's August first. Come on. All right. So let's see. Come back here. <coughs> so the only only. Um, deal with this one is you need to put in a um, current clamp, a current probe from multi-sim to be able to measure current. Uh, we put a five milliamp, one kilohertz signal in, sine wave in, and then we can measure that with a current, um, with a current probe to be able to bring it into our oscilloscope and we can see without too much trouble that the red input signal and the blue output signal are basically inverted. So 180 degrees of phase shift, no big deal. Um, we could, if we wanted to do some, um, uh, we could do some um, parametric plots and adjust the input. Um, input uh, frequency and amplitude to see exactly how this circuit works. It changes feedback resistor to basically adjust the amplitude of the output, to see what limits there are. Let me see here. Do I have, no, I don't have that right there. Let me just check here real quick. Uh, Okay, let me, let me do this real quick. Remote, remote into my laptop. 
And so this circuit here is very straightforward. Not, not a whole lot to get too excited about. But there will be some circuit limitations based on frequency and gain. Uh, now, five milliamps is a, is a fairly small, it's, actually, it's a pretty big signal. <laughs> um, so you could also check to see how this circuit works. I just put this guy here. Let me do this. It's like I'm having trouble connecting. Okay. So if I make this instead of five milliamps, let me run it first. Looks nice and clean. It's a it's on a hundred x scale compared to the input, right? Because of the feedback resistor. Let me make this instead of uh, five milliamps. Let me make it five microamps. And if I do that, I think that'll. I need to take this guy down, maybe to put it on the same scale. Uh, okay, so then I got to do. There we go. There we go. So it's still working. And it looks like it's pretty good shape, even at five microamps. Uh, if I go down even further, five, uh, that's e to the minus six, I would do e to the minus nine nano. And then run it. It's looking halfway decent, even with five nanoamps of current. <clears throat> and this would probably be around the range of typical application uh, if you were going to use this as a trans impedance amplifier. Usually the signals are really, really small. So uh, that would be OK. Now, if I change this frequency, say if I made it uh, 100 kilohertz. Stop it. Change the time base. Now it still looks good, right? Although, if you look here, if I set this, let's see, which one is this? So you set this to the uh, Y max. And I come here. And I set this to the Y min. They should actually be on top of each other if they were perfectly in phase. But now there's a little bit of a phase shift because you're running into the upper limit of the op amp in terms of its gain bandwidth product. Okay. So if I went even one more step, if I put it at one mag. You can see definitely that there's um, definitely there's a phase shift and an attenuation due to the upper limit of the op amp. Okay. You might ask, well, how do I fix that? That's what I really need. And the answer is really uh, to use maybe a different op amp. You know, we stuck with the LM741. You know, throughout this exercise, because it's a it's a classical part that is uh, very well documented, um, very straightforward. Uh, doesn't require anything fancy to be able to use. Does have the option to do some balance here, okay. but for the most part, we don't have to worry about it. So if you wanted better performance, you could use a better option. Go back. The next circuit is the integrator. And this really kind of is an interesting design because uh, it 
it takes it from uh, the simple, uh, basically amplifier kind of configurations to really now looking at how this thing works in the time or frequency domain. And we have, we have um, a two conditions here. We have a, a integrate and a reset uh, function. The equation is up here, right? The integration from T1 to T2 of some input signal, right? Um, so you do this relative to, to uh, time and the multiplier is minus one over R, R1C1, which means this is effectively the gain of it, right? It's the DC term. <clears throat> so, uh, or the constant. That's what the circuit looks like. It has two uh, positions because <clears throat> Once this capacitor has started up and retains charge, to reset it for the next signal or the next input, you want to reset it and have, uh, have it reset fast enough so that uh, then when you integrate again, you're not, you don't have any residual charge on the C1 capacitor. Okay, so that's the overall concept. If we picked arbitrarily picked one, uh, we picked uh, R1, R2, we made R2 equal to R1, a uh, 1K ohm, and the capacitor, uh, one microfarad, and put in a five millivolt signal. Now this time we're gonna put in a uh, pulse, uh, pulse waveform. Um, and we really have two conditions here. We have the condition of the switch being open and the switch being closed. Because this is uh, toggled based upon this, this uh, switch being uh, closed or open, it's asynchronous relative to the input signal, the red signal, which is just a five uh, millivolt peak signal that's got a, some sort of a time domain simulation here, time domain waveform here. And it gets this really bizarre looking result. Okay. So let's see, did I, did my, um, I don't know whether or not my <coughs> remote actually happened. happened or not. There it is. No. So let me see. Uh, see today, I thought I had it over here. It wouldn't be that one. Let me check one thing. Uh, sent items. Eight. Uh, okay, there we go, this guy. Let me pull this one down and pull this one down. Uh, let me open this, extract all. So let's say that we wanted to be a little better at the design of this. And this is not, this is not perfectly correct um, in terms of what you ought to have. Ideally, what you would want is uh, you would want basically this to be flat, then this to go up for the input and come back down like it's doing. But you want the results out here to basically go to some negative voltage that corresponds to the integral of the square wave. And then at this uh, uh, marker two time, 
you want this to stay flat, okay? <clears throat> stay flat, you know, because that's how an integrator would work, right? It would it would collect, it would integrate the, the area under the curve, and then it would stay flat for uh, for a long time, right? Before it would uh, discharge. Now it's going to discharge a little bit because uh, in the real world, this capacitor is going to see uh, an impedance that's going to want to uh, <coughs> want to discharge that capacitor. But this is okay, right? To do it this way. We can still measure this amplitude down here to see what's fun. And you can see that it <coughs> that it goes. Now it's got a really long period. Let's stop it. There it goes again. And then it goes again. It's a little bit off. It's a little bit off because you can see that that when the switch closes, there's a little bit of a bump here. And then it goes back and it actually, when it, it's supposed to be flat here, but it's not, not resetting back to, to zero. So <coughs> you could try trying to do something that we really haven't played with, which was this offset. Yes. Now to do that, uh, okay, let's do this. So before we do that, stop. Let's go back to the original one. Let's do that. Integrator. And let's just let's just do so we'll do that simulation. And it's, it looks the same, but you see here, you see here where it's, um, where it's going like this. That means that the, the switch is open right now. It should basically be um, flat here. So it's not ideal. Let's try, let's try first off, let's close that switch and see what the results would be um, with it basically just turned into um, an inverted amplifier, but it really doesn't have, you know, uh, no gain, 0.1 gain. If we come here to channel B, So it's it's humming along, and then when it's when it hits this guy, there's something something happening uh, where it like it gets instead of just getting that that there's some response there. Well, it's supposed to have a response there, so that's okay. This is the correct response, and let's see if I stop it. Let me just measure something here. It says when, see, this is the, the marker number two. So the channel A input is the input signal. This says I'm getting zero volts in, but you see channel B says, well, I really have 49 microvolts out here on the output of the op amp, right? That is really, uh, I mean, it's not very big, but it's it's a little bit of an error that could could mess things up. Okay. So if you wanted to do some more uh, study of this, what I would suggest is looking. At, this is if you look at the application note, right now. Where's that? At? You look at the application note, you would see you would see that this is just called 
the integrator, right? We built it exactly as advertised and it doesn't work exactly right. So I would suggest at this point, because we're not going to take any more time with it, is to do a little bit of research to find out uh, what people have done. Maybe, you know, maybe if we did uh, simple things like, well, if I made this, suppose I made this um, uh, 100K or maybe 10K, and this, this 10K. Like any better performance with that. So we'll get that 49 microvolts. Let me open the switch. Let me stop it. Uh, so let's change this scale here. It's still, see how it still uh, sags? It's not able to maintain that, that value. If I, if I increase this capacitance, and let's rerun it. Ooh, so that might look a little bit better. Let's see, if we change the scale. Ah, uh, it's still doing the same thing, right? It's not able to maintain that that voltage there when the switch is open. Last thing, if I double click on the switch, uh, the on resistance is really, really small and the off resistance is pretty, pretty um, big. I added another zero here and run it again. This is all just through experimentation. It didn't change it, right? didn't really change the response. So it's not the switch. It's not the capacitance value. It's not the resistor. So it could be something with the op amp itself. I'd be curious if you disconnected it from the uh, oscilloscope and put a voltage probe on there. I wonder mm -hmm. if you'd see it hold steady. Like, uh, I wonder if it's draining into the oscilloscope. That's a great idea. So let's see if we double click on the oscilloscope. Uh, so let's see, we don't have any information about the oscilloscope itself. So let's do that. Let's disconnect this wire and we'll put, so what do you want to put there? A probe, voltage probe? Yeah. Okay, we'll put a voltage probe right there. Now we don't know the really the characteristics of the probe. Uh, so uh, if I do parameters, custom, just put this voltage here. I'll run it. There's if I short, if I open it. It takes some time, it looks like. It is continuing to go up. It's either doing something good or it's doing something not good because this guy is still doing his thing. And that that could be it could be something related to the test equipment. Right. Yeah. But that's a great idea. I suppose a uh, sim a uh, like a transient simulation, something where you're not actively 
uh, plugging something into that net, but it'll tell you what voltage is in the net. Right. Uh, might be able to display that better, but. Yeah, you could you could use a if you use the the multimeter, right? If you use the multimeter instead of the probe, you have sort of like the same dilemma as the oscilloscope because it's got an impedance. So let's get the DC voltage, right? So I'll start off with a switch closed. That's interesting. There we go. It went up like that. And this thing didn't really change. So let's now do that. It'll jump right up to 7.915 and it's staying there. Now, I don't believe that's the right voltage, right? Because it should be a negative voltage instead of a positive voltage, right? It should be going the other way. So if I short it, they're starting to die. That's going the right direction. It's taking forever though. So it's just weird. But you could you could uh, also look because people have studied this. You could take a look at uh, the web and do a little more research on the integrator, practical integrator, because people have studied this and uh, figured out how to make it work because it is uh, used, okay? It is, but one other thing too is, um, you know, uh, this right here basically forms an RC time constant or an RC. So this would really, uh, if, I did, if I did this radical stuff, let me do file, save as, and I'll call this uh, a. Let me let me delete this guy. Now there are some something else that I didn't like really with the circuit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this guy, delete this guy, delete this guy. Actually delete him. I'm gonna place a component. I'm going to put a AC source there, an AC voltage right there. And I'm gonna go back to the original configuration, which is 1K and one microfarad. And I'm gonna set, instead of doing a time domain simulation, I'm gonna do simulation analysis. I'm gonna do a AC sweep. Oh. Let me do this to prop properties. Let me call this V out. And I'll turn on the net so I can see it. And I'll put it down here. And I'll call this VN properties VN. Turn that on. Simulation analysis. <clears throat> and now do uh I want an AC sweep output. Okay, this is looks. Uh, I want to go lower in frequency than than that. Maybe maybe I'll go. Uh, okay, I'll go ten hertz. 
and I'll display the vertical scale in decibels, output, add expression, V out, divided by V in. Come on, you could do it. Not that hard. I got a quick, okay, this should be in dB. All right, uh, I don't care. So this thing is going down, 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 down. And then it does this weird stuff. But you see, it's like acting like what they call a low pass filter. It's passing, passing low frequencies. And now the phase is going to do some crazy stuff here. Right. But this has got, this has got uh, the classical characteristics of a single pole amplifier where it attenuates, if I do 10 Hertz, Let's go to 10 hertz to uh, set the x value to um, 100. Okay, so this here here to here is one is one decade. So if I look at the y2 versus the y1 value, it's roughly 20 dB down, which would correspond to a single pole caused by the op amp. And it, it does the same thing here. I go to, to an X value of 1K. Uh, you know, I'm, I should be here to here. And actually it's not quite, quite right. Should be, this should be uh, minus 20 dB, minus 18 dB. So it's not too far off. But it's doing the right kind of thing. 20 dB per decade attenuation due to a single pole. But it's got a band limitation on it. Okay. Frequency limitation on it due to the op amp or due to the really in this case is due to the um, the RC value. Okay. Next up, next up is um, something else that is calculus related, okay, which is look at the application notes called the practical differentiator. Now, the real um, integrated differentiator is this capacitor uh, in tandem with this resistor, C C1 and R2, okay, C1, R2. That makes up, that really makes up the differentiator part. These other parts here are added for stability, okay? Whatever that, that means, they're, they're added to kind of compensate for the fact that uh, you got it set up like this, which kind of puts it in an unstable mode. Actually, if you run a simulation without this part and out this part, it actually rings uh, on the transition for um, the, the input signal. Now, this, this particular guy also has a little capacitor here, 30 puff, 30 picofarad. This is um, really small and is for uh, compensation. Uh, but our LM741 doesn't have those pins to add that compensation. So you're going to just get what you get with uh, 7, 741. Um, so that's the other thing. And then the last piece is when you design this, it's really a, it's a little bit of a head scratcher. So this right here is uh, a one frequency. You see that's that's basically this FC frequency, and then some someplace above that, 
okay? Someplace above that. You're gonna, you're gonna basically make this guy. And if you pick a value for, maybe this is, maybe like this is 100 Hertz and this is one kilohertz, right? So you gotta adjust, uh, in this case, if you want, if you want this to be a hundred, then you pick the values to be able to do that. And then you compensate like this, this equation. So it's one K. And so you adjust the R1 value for a given C, uh, C1 value, right? And then likewise, you compensate, you, you, pick, you picked an R2, now you compensate the C2 so that it's equal to this guy, and then everything should work fine. Okay. That's what this thing is saying. When you look at, now this is, this is from a different um, piece of information, new um, reference that I added, that is uh, practical differentiators. This is what this is what made me think about, well, gee, there's probably some solutions on the, the uh, integrator. Maybe there's a practical integrator that uh, somebody has looked at and, and figured out exactly the best way to be able to design an integrator using a 741. But this is saying <clears throat> this, this, and they call it uh, in this note, FA and FB, and this is equal to FC and then this is equal to FH. And then when you see this guy come down like this, this is really the uh, crossover frequency, uh, the unity gain point that uh, this is saying what that is, F unity is, is, is right there. So this has got to be way higher than this guy or this guy. But this FA, corresponds to FC and FB corresponds to FH. Okay. But that's what it should look like. Uh, so if you do a little bit of calculation, you put these one microfarad and one K, you can uh, figure out the values for C2 and R1. And the results are um, almost perfect. Right with this guy, they uh, you get a so here's a ten. It's on ten millivolts per division. Uh, you get on twenty millivolts div division. Uh, so you get you get a nice good signal. You can now in your uh, rest of your electronics, you can look for these pulses, right? These transitions, and they will correspond to the edges of your square wave. A positive transition on the input will result in a negative transition and negative uh, detection on the, uh, on the output. Okay. So let's see, let's pull that guy up. So the differentiator. So here's the circuit. Uh, let's see, we didn't really look at this on the integrator. Uh, this is a five millivolt signal. It's got a two second delay. It's got a rise time of 10 microseconds, which is really relatively slow. <coughs> it's got a pulse width of one second and a period of two seconds. Now this is a faster, this is like a true square wave. Um, I put an amplitude in here of, of uh, one, thinking that this was going to uh, do something, but it really doesn't do anything for us here. Run it. <coughs> so it looks good. Now there's a little bit of a glitch right there. Right there, there's a little bit of a glitch, but it looks very good if you're just looking for edges. It's very good. Uh, see, this is on two millivolts per division. I put these both on 
five you see that it is a smaller signal coming out amplitude wise than the input was If I take this guy and go to uh, click on this signal, and say go to the uh, next minimum, I think you do it. Go to the Y, to the Y minimum. That's this voltage right here, very, very small voltage. And then I do this guy and I say go to the max. That didn't do it. So we're talking picovolts of signal, but hundreds of picovolts. So we could add a, an amplifier out here to be able to increase the amplitude of these signals. Maybe, maybe we can do some something here, um, adjusting these values to be able to get more of an amplitude. Um, if we did, if we, but if we did that, we'd have to adjust, um, we'd have to adjust, if we went up to 10K, we'd have to go down 0.1. Right, if we went up to 10K, uh, let's see, is this guy gonna change? So we'd, have to, we'd have to do some adjustment of, of possibly all, all those parts, or at least, at least a couple of them to be able to get uh, any change in it. But from a functionality standpoint, that looks, that looks pretty good. Uh, if I look at Sims here, what have I got? Uh, differentiator. I don't really have anything. Oh, let's see. Differentiator. Okay, I got a rev. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, so these are these are all equal value now. So let's see what that looks like. I think it's on the same, same as what it was before. Let's try this guy. Oh, okay. So this is doing, this is, uh, let's see, what is this guy doing? Wow. Stop. And run. Okay. So now, now we're looking at the frequency response, like we did with the um, op amp with the integrator. Now these look like maybe they're not exactly the same as we had. One K here. Let's see. We had 1K. Oh, okay. I'm confused. Let me, let me close this one. File close. I'll save it. Go back to here. Good. What's going on? Let me close everything. Did I overwrite it? Computer. I'm not sure what's going on. Something is different. So this doesn't look like the same one we started with. We had 1K and one microfarad. 
but then we had to adjust these two. Let's see, what did I do wrong? Uh, Let's see what I have. Do I can. I believe this was, uh, let's see, this was, let's see if we did this. Why is it doing that? We'll just pull this up. Actually, let me see. Can I have it over here? Nah, you can do it. I can't get to my remote. Desk. So we said, we said F. Let's see, where did I, I just had it here. Let's go back to the slides. Back here. So uh, we will say uh, FC equals, and let's do it this way. We'll say uh, C1 uh, equals one microfarad, one e to the minus six. Uh, we will say R2 equals 1K equals 1E to the 3. We'll put both of these in engineering notation format. So <coughs> 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 okay, very like that. And so FC is equal to equal to one divided by parentheses two times pi times RC1 times R2. So we like that format cell number. Okay, we like that. Uh, we know that the gain bandwidth product of the op amp is uh, like uh, it megahertz, one megahertz or so. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the upper end for this F unity, but FH now. So FH, so let's see, we've got, uh, we need to figure out um, R1 equals, uh, and then F will put down, actually let's put down with this way, FH, equals, I will make this 10 times bigger than this. Okay. So equals, so now if we, uh, if we solve for R1, we can say it's equal to one divided by parentheses two times pi times, uh, let's see, we got FH times, uh, C1, I think that's right, that's not right. Oh, yeah, it is, on that cell, number, it's 100 ohms. So therefore, um, C1, and if I'm going slow for you, uh, I apologize, I'm just <clears throat> thinking out loud equals one divided by parentheses two times pi times FH times, uh, now I want, um, I want, oh, I was gonna do this in R2. Uh, so what did I do? I get the wrong formula. Times, uh, I did, R1, I need, okay, I need R2, come on. 
times times R2 times uh, FH. So that's point one. Format cell for 100 nanofarad. Let's put that. Let's put that information in our simulation and see what happens. So we said this was 100 nanofarad. This was 100 ohm. We simulate now. Ooh, look at that. Uh, let's change the scale here. We get a nice healthy, nice healthy um, edge. So it fixed our problem relative to gain at the output, right? I don't believe anything looks uh, off here except this thing here where we're starting off and I have this guy offset by one volt. And then it looks like the signal gets um, dragged down to eliminate the DC from the signal, right? If I eliminate this guy, it might be more apparent. Which was is kind of kind of nice that it's doing that, because I really want this signal, and because I put this in with an initial condition of zero, and really this is a zero to five millivolt signal square wave. Um, I was kind of stuck with that, right? In terms of the signal is kind of artificially uh, inserted. If I wanted, I was just looking at just purely edge. I'd want that to be, let's see if I yeah, offset it, I offset it by uh, minus 2.5 millivolts. Would that, would that fix it? No. Zero. Initial value, pulse value. There's really no, there's no um, thing I can do here relative to the um, DC offset. In other words, if I wanted to put in a plus and minus uh, two point, oh, how about if I did that? Pulse, no, that's pulse value. No, I don't think I can do that one. But let's try uh, one more thing. File, save as, and we'll call this, because I kind of messed things up a little bit. We'll call this X. Let's replace this. <clears throat> now I can replace this with a, um, I can replace this with place, Replace, replace, replace component. I can replace this with a piecewise linear model. And then I could define exactly what I wanted. If I do that, I could say, and I can do the values at zero time, I want zero volts. And then at one second, one second, I want to go to um, 2.5 millivolts. And then at two seconds, come on, two seconds, I want to go to 2. Point, oh, this is getting hard. 2.5 millivolts. And then 2. 
0.001, I want to go to minus 2.5 millivolts. And four. Uh, I want to go to 2.5 millivolts or something like that. I don't know. 2.5. Doing something else bizarre. And it's taking forever. But I could I could mess around with that and try to do that. <coughs> or the other thing I can do, edit undo. Edit undo. Undo, edit, undo. Nah. Okay. Now, <coughs> it could take, if this signal is right, I could add, okay, so it goes up. So if I want to do place cap, or maybe what I could do is add a, I want to add a DC power. Right here, and I want to suck this down to minus 2.5 millivolt. Now, if I run it, still doesn't work. <clears throat> Pulse amp value of five millivolts. I subtract two and a half off of why doesn't this start? Why doesn't this start? Right off the bat, why doesn't this start at minus 2.5? Channel one, That's channel one. I don't get it. It should should sub subtract two point five millivolts. So we could play with that. We can also add that um, resistor that pot there between these two points and the minus VSS rail and see if that does anything. Now we did also have possibly we could do something on this side to compensate for the offset. So um, we could do that. But Suffice it to say, if we follow this guideline, we get something that's pretty close to what we want. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> looks like in the circuit, I actually put the right values. And maybe I, maybe I got to update that, update that schematic. We could do one more thing too with that circuit. Let's delete this, doesn't do anything. So we've got, if we just zoom in on the edge, let's forget about, actually that's all right, simulate. Okay, so if we 
zoom in on the edge. We'll take this guy, screw this guy up. <clears throat> and we look at the edge. So what are we saying here? This amplitude is getting marker two channel B. Set to uh, max so it's seventy point four microvolts. That's all it is on a ten millivolt scale. Something is something is wrong. Can't zoom in that way. Well, we know it's about two units. So it's almost 20 millivolts, right? Um, ought to be this guy here. It's weird. It's it's kind of like. Try setting the X to two seconds. The X on the uh, uh, cursor, the X value. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Set this to the, the X value of two. Yeah. Nope, didn't work. Yeah, it's something is weird with with that because it should it should um, zoom in there. It's such a quick signal. You see how the marker is not even changing amplitudes. I try to zoom in there. It's not really doing doing it, but it's a roughly it's roughly twenty millivolts. Okay, now if I come back here and I say, okay, let's change the rise time and the fall time of the signal because it's supposed to be edge. It's supposed to be edge sensitive, right? It didn't really change the amplitude of the, the differentiated uh, signal, the edge amplitude. It's about the same. Even with 100, if I even make it higher, add another zero. It, it actually got smaller, but you can see there that the signal looks, um, come on, you can do it. It looks like it's doing something there, but. So it still works even with slower edges. Maybe the signal amplitude is going to be a little bit lower. And then the last thing is <coughs> uh, analysis options. Let's see, uh, circuit restrictions. Where is that simulation? Uh, where's it at? Tools should be here. Global options. I don't think that's it. Options. Over circuit restrictions. What are you looking for? Looking for the time step. I think that might be in a simulation and analysis. Oh, maybe that is F stop. There is the end time, maximum time step. Set a small will improve accuracy. Okay, but it'll run. Let's see what that does.
But yeah. Is it even moving? It is moving because this is flickering. So it can't do that. Simulation analysis. So about uh, six run. Here it's moving. I don't want to wait for two seconds. <clears throat> Let's do this. This is delay. Let's say 0 0.1 delay time. Run it again. Now this is 50 milliseconds per division. So it ought to, ought, something ought to be happening right at here. This is like watching paint dry. Didn't really change. Ooh, that's interesting. What I don't know what happened here. We have uh, both channel A and B. Oh, and you see it uh, reset because it, it couldn't save all the data. Simulation analysis. Set a small T max to improve accuracy. Uh, initial step size, output, uh, discard data to say we do this, then it won't, it shouldn't reset. Must be greater than T max. We'll put that. So you could you could play with actually the some of the characteristics of the simulation. This is doing numerical integration. And so when you have a fast rate of change signal like that uh, output, it could be limited by the actual um, numerical integration that was done. So this doesn't look right either, right? Because the input signal, which ought to be on the top, unless I mess this up, the late time, Rise time, oh, well, 100 microseconds. I think that would still work. You got a one second width. I'm not sure about that one. Looks like there was supposed to be something else happening here, but the simulation stopped. Did I stop it? Did not stop it. What is this time scale? This is one second. Yeah, it's going to take forever for it to, to get to the other side. Okay. Any questions? Uh, not on this material. All right. So that's that's really just an introduction to op amps. There's way more to it. Um, if we had more time, we could do some labs with this, but. I think just doing the simulations is probably a good uh, a good thing to try. And you've got everything that you need there, I think, for that.